Welcome to my first meta breakdown video. Today, we're going to be looking at the Pearl meta as it stood at champions, which agents were played and why, the core agents and the flexible agents around that, how to play those different comps, and some ideas that you might be able to take into your five stack matches. So as you can see here, Chamber, Fade, and Astra are all nice and big. These are the core agents on Pearl all boasting above an 80% pick rate at champs. And then below them, I have what I consider the five next best agents that you can combine in a number of different ways fit around this core of Chamber Fate Astra. What that means and how, depending on which agents you pick, how you might decide to play that comp and the strategies that you might use. So firstly, let's have a look at some of the numbers. We have, as you can see, Chamber and Fade picked up in the same amount of games and Astra in only one game fewer. Then we have both KO and Viper getting picked up 50% of the time, which was nine times each. Neon and Raze as the two premier duelists that were used and an interesting amount of Sage being picked up. Before we get into the meat of this video, here is the non-mirror round win rate at Champions. Don't pay too much attention to this because this is a very small sample size of only like nine matches. It does paint a little bit of an interesting picture. Astra showed to be dominant. KO and Sage are both great picks. Raze had a slight favor over Neon and then Chamber and Fade uh, in the two, in the one or two matches that they weren't picked um, fared sort of evenly. So, so yeah. Firstly, why Chamber? So... All the flank protection that you need on attack, the way that the map of Pearl is built means that placing a chamber trip just here at the bottom of stairs at the top of B, the way that Pearl is built means that placing a trip here at, in B club protects any flanks that you might get from mid or all the way through spawn as you're pushing B and the same as you, if you put one at the top of restaurant, same flank protection that you get from mid, from an art wrap or pushing up from B main. Being able to set and forget and not have to worry about the flank is obviously super valuable. The fact that you can be anywhere on the map on chamber is a huge benefit. I think Cypher is potentially a bit of an overinvestment in flank watch and Killjoy because the map is so big, it's you have to be in that same area. So it makes it hard to play around. Killjoy is util. Chamber is also one of only two agents that can hold a really forward angle on B long as a defender, and he's much better at it than Yoru. Chamber is obviously the best operator wielder on defense, being able to play forward angles and then TP back and then hold long angles as well. So Chamber is the best agent in the game at locking down B long on Pearl. Because of this, it gives you a ton of map control, a very, the most common and simple setup is just tripping doors in B link and playing up B long. And what that means is that you actually control all of this area of the map. This allows your team to stack towards A site and make A an absolute fortress with also being able to facilitate quick shuffles over towards the B site as well. Obviously, he's a major threat on pistol and eco rounds, especially using that long advantage with the that he has with the headhunter. And he has fantastic lurk and flank potential in a map that offers very creative pathings for lurks and flanks. And he doesn't cost his team any utility value while he's on those lurks. Okay, so that's chamber, but why fade? Well, Fade is a great counter to Chamber. And if you're going to be seeing Chamber in 90% of games, you may as well bring a Fade. Uh, she's the best agent at pushing Chamber off of his angles, especially those very forward angles like the one in B long. Prowlers are probably the best tool that you have to push Chamber off angles because you can't turn away from a Prowler like you can turn away from a Flash. Haunt and Seize are also decent tools of pushing Chamber off angles. If you need to use them in a pinch, they can create pressure that Chamber feels that he needs to TP out of. Along with that, all of the rooftops on Pearl actually create great lineups that you can use with Fade to get really high Haunt placements, which make it really hard to shoot out and get you can get a lot of value with Haunt. It also makes it really easy to improvise Haunt placements on the fly. You just look up at a rooftop and throw it and there you go. 
Nightfall covers 100% of both sites and more from safe deploy spots on both attack and defense. And one thing that I forgot to write down here is that because of all the tight corridors and things like that, Prowlers become really good at clearing multiple angles with one piece of util. And why Astra? Well, you get global smokes on a big map. That's really important because it means you can smoke from anywhere. You're not punished by playing the wrong site. Large smokes help cover large entrance to A site, which has now been changed in the 5.06 patch and can provide decent cover from B long, especially in the post plant. It actually takes up like two thirds of the B long width. So with the correct positioning, you, you can get quite a lot of cover for it and place the attackers into compromised positions. Strong post plant plays with gravity well. Both A and B are quite hard sites to hold. We're going to get into that later in the video, but it means that a lot of teams will play heavy post plants. Dissipate is the cheapest way to cross from B club to B console and break operator crosshairs. Uh, and Cosmic Divide actually gives you a wall option for switching up on the attack side. And obviously it's great on defensive side. What kind of comps can we build around this core? Well, the first comp that we're going to look at is adding a burst duelist in neon or rays and flashes in KO. I've dubbed this the standard approach because this gives you smokes, flank watch, intel, flashes, and movement burst. Firstly, let's talk about KO because KO brings a lot of value to Pearl. You get really great zero point placements, especially on defense, being able to get early information on a uh, aggressive B plays towards both A and B by putting your zero points here. On attack side, you can get really long, deep flashes into both sites. Popping his ultimate null command makes it pretty much impossible to complete an A split. Even if you're rotating through connector, you're still catching all of art and main if you're coming from B link and running into here. Now for your fifth agent, Raze or Neon. Now for the fifth pick, your duelist, Raze or Neon. Now, they both have their advantages. I think Neon is better for attacking the B site. It can really slice it up. And for Raze, she's much better at attacking the A site. Let's start with Raze. So because we're descending into the A site as attackers, that means Raze's blast packs get a lot of value. You get a lot of extra distance as you're moving down into the site. So you're able to really burst through the site. Combined with the Astra smokes, you know, you can either smoke flowers and dugout, or you can smoke art if you're electing to do a push, a five push through main rather than doing an A split, allowing you to get all the way into secret and dugout and play for this area of the site. You know, you've got uh, your nade to push back flowers or to right click over the wall into dugout to clear out dugout. Boombot can also uh, get all the way down here and push into secret. And so you can get a lot of value clearing out a lot of the site with rays. Of course, you can also do other things like uh, having a Nova Pulse come into the back of site as well as rays dashes in, etc., etc., etc. Whereas if you want to attack the B site, Neon's going to provide a lot of value for you because with the fast lane, that allows you to cut all the way across site, open up this lane to attack hall. You can also hit these relay bolts into hall to take off this first angle. You can also, as you're running in, relay bolt like this, which allows you to hit uh, the back side of hall and gives you a really nice entrance into hall. As you stun this as well you know, like this, et cetera, et cetera. And you can have an agent run in behind you. And then all of a sudden you're creating crossfires into site as the rest of the team floods in from B main. Haunts are coming in, smokes are smoking off tower and link. And so it makes it really hard for the defenders to defend this site. And then what you can do as Neon is commit to sort of trying to hold hall for as long as possible while your team sets up in B main and you just become a real nuisance in the back of site here. Now, of course, both Rays and Neon can provide value through mid and also on the other sites. My personal preference would be to bring the Neon. I think if you're bringing double initiator, Rays is sort of a semi-initiator sort of subcategory herself because she clears out angles with her nade and she info gathers with her boom bot. Now, these are damaging clears, so they're a little bit different to info clears, but you can still use them in an initiator type of way. Whereas with Neon, I feel her util fits into the better current team comp. 
You get the wall, which allows you to act as a pseudo smoker, allows you to cut up B site as well as cut off angles on A site because we're playing single smokes, as well as providing stuns and that burst movement speed. I feel like the synergy of the util gives you a lot more flexibility in things that you can do. But if you have someone who's an absolute ra a raise main and you want to slam down that A site, go for your life. The next comp that we have is actually a no duelist comp where we're bringing the Viper instead of the duelist. So we're still using that KO and we're going to be using the KO and the fade to get a lot of information. And we're going to try and play the map a little bit more, especially on attack. What we're going to try and do is maneuver around and find gaps in the defense with our Intel gathering tool and slowly take space and pick apart the defense. That might look like using zero points like this. Um, you know, you're prowling to clear off this chamber, but using your prowler to clear out the chamber, but maybe you're playing fade towards A. So KO can actually zero point and fragment this. So it makes it impossible for chamber to stay. With this, chamber can't execute any trade denial. He's forced to dig into that position. You also have these deep knives, which allow you to really push into a site without getting anchored and the big benefits that viper brings as you can probably guess you know you've got a bunch of different walls that you can do on on b side you have walls like this you have walls like this or like this or uh you have walls like this which gives you a lot of flexibility in the way that you want to set up and play the B site. Uh, on attacking side, th I think this is just a, an amazing default wall that you can just, when you're playing Viper Astra, just throw this wall every round. You're not going to need it on A if you're going A with Astra and it stops the defense from being able to get an early read on whether or not you're going A or B. Because if you're just throwing this every round, then it's it doesn't give them the information that you would normally get from, oh, the Viper wall is coming down A. Unless they're faking, they're going towards A or B or whatever site it is on, on that map. Uh, another wall that uh, I've been using as well, which really allows you to play for mid control and commit even further to anchoring down A, is it makes art like impossible to push through. It cuts off this mid space. Then you've got to push it through one, two, three times to get to site, as well as allowing your chamber or someone to lurk through into a if you have a ko in art you can flash this and push through you know maybe it's your neon if you want to play this aggressive play neon pushes through and stuns and now you have sh mid chops control uh so there's really nice combos there and then one of the biggest benefits of playing Viper and Viper Astra is that Viper just locks down A. Like it's so hard to push through Poison Cloud, Poison Cloud runs out, so you molly. Molly runs out, so you molly again. By the time that's done, Poison Cloud is back up. And so that in total is something like 30, 40 seconds of just unable to being able to push down A stairs with Viper alone. And then you combine Astra smokes, then you combine uh, gravity well, stun, Nova Pulse. Like it makes A an absolute fortress. Viper and Astra together, it's in, it's almost impossible to uh, take A cleanly. The other major benefit of this comp is it's really strong in the post plant on attack. So if you look at the actual sites on Pearl, they're pretty hard to hold unless you go quite deep into the site. So as attackers, if you get into B hall, this can provide some nice cover. But if you're actually playing on site, like where are you playing? You can't play here. Like you can't play here. You can't like, you have to like get to here and like hold this angle or get into tower or like push into B link and defend this. And you really have to over push site to be able to hold site on B. And it's the same with A. If you're just trying to like hold here or hold here, if you don't have art, you can't play these positions. Art's really hard to hold because you're trying to worry about fighting sight, but you've got two different angles that you can get pushed in the side from. So that makes art a hard hold in the post plant as well. So unless you like push all the way into secret here and you play dugout and you play here, what a lot of teams sort of figured out is that it's really hard to hold these sights. So 
let's play post plant. And so with Astra, Gravity Well, KO Molly, Viper Molly, Viper Molly, you can see it gets quite hard to play this post plant. You know, you can even throw Caesars in. This will make the, the Viper Mollies even more effective. And it's the same with B side as well. It's it's completely, it's so open. It's so hard to play out in the open, which brings us to our next idea. Bring one of the four agents listed above and play the Sage. Now, there's some cool things that you could do with the B-Link wall that we saw Paper Rex do, which we can't do anymore because they changed B-Link. I think that was partly to make B-Link a little bit easier, but to remove that peak over into B-Main. But Sage really changes up the way that B-Site plays out because... Because of the wall, it allows you to just come in and we do these like icebox plant wall plants where we put the spike down right in this corner and we play post plant around this wall. It also means on defense that you can actually wall off this whole area if you want to, or you can, after the spike goes down, you can wall yourself to deny post plant and defuse. So it creates this whole like sage meta around the B site, depending on what you want to give up to bring the Sage in is really up to you. There's a lot of flexibility. You know, you could run double controller Sage with the Viper. You could run your Duelist. You could run the KO. There's lots of other options as well. Like we've seen other teams bring Omen and things like that, which might go really, really well. I'd recommend sticking to these four agents to bring along with the fade just because i think they're the agents that provide the best util on pearl sage does get sort of less value towards a um this wall isn't as good on a on art it's like kind of like you can technically jump over these walls unless they're placed like all the way up here if you place it all the way up here it's it's just broken you don't get a heap of value out of it um, same with art, you can jump over it this way. Doors, you can actually jump over it this way as well, unless you do it really deep. Uh, there's also obviously the TikTok wall, where if you plant in this back corner, somehow you get a sage on a lurk and you've saved your wall, you can shoot it through here. Um, sage forces your opponents to play the map in a little bit of a different way and allows you to creatively play with the, with the map in a little bit of a different way as well. And on attack on A, Sage actually, with this wall here, really, really nicely allows you to sort of play deeper into sight and actually closes off this area and forces defenders into this little funnel here, which allows you to set up crossfires from playing here and here. Uh, from here, you can be seen from the top of art, so you have to watch out for that angle. But Defenders have to then walk in all through this way to get to the spike and you know, you can plant it here Which is a lot a lot more open to play from main post plant as well um, So the sage attack value and defense value is definitely something that you have to consider When you're picking your comp for pearl. Thanks so much for watching I hope this was a helpful video and spoke about why you might be seeing certain agents on pearl I look forward to doing this on other maps as well and looking into certain strategies that teams are employing to be successful on those other maps. That's all for me today. Take care. Have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe, all the rest of it. Bye.